Hi, and welcome to MFC Online. Today's lesson is called da, 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 Story Lesson Animals in the City. As you know from our lessons in class, we've been talking a lot about research and how to paraphrase. Paraphrasing is when you take information you get from a book and you write it down for your research in your own words. For today's story lesson, we're going to read a book called Animals in the City. This book is written by Elizabeth Carney. Elizabeth, who is the author, is the one who owns all of the words and all of the research in this book because she did the work to find out the information. So in order to paraphrase her work, after I read this book, what you're going to do is you're going to go in your story writing journal and you're going to write down the title of your research and then you're going to write down as much information as you can remember from the book using your own words. If you need to, you can pause the video to write something down or you can start the video over to listen to the story again if you wanted to uh, get some more information before writing it down. Let's get started. Animals in the City by Elizabeth Carney. Wild cities. Streetlights, traffic, crowded crosswalks. We're used to seeing cities packed with people. But have you noticed that cities are full of animals too? What animals would you expect to see in a city? This picture represents a famous crosswalk called Shibuya Crossing in Tokyo, Japan. Pigeons are a common sight in many cities. They might start their day strolling through a park. They peck bird seed that people feed them. Later, they might strut down a busy street looking for bits of dropped food. Like many city animals, pigeons are scavengers. A scavenger is an animal that survives by finding plants, dead animals, or trash to eat. Pigeons find plenty to eat in the city. Many types of animals choose to live in cities. It's easy for them to find food there, so they move in. Other animals don't have a choice. As humans push into wild places, many animals lose their natural homes. They must learn to adapt to their new surroundings. Adapt means to change in order to survive in different conditions. Let's meet some other recently spotted city critters. In this picture, this peregrine falcon mother built her nest in a planter on a city balcony. New neighbors. In Chicago, a stadium parking lot holds a secret. There, a mother coyote raises her cubs in a hidden den. About 2,000 coyotes live in Chicago. Crafty coyotes are well suited to city living. Why? They'll eat almost anything, and they use their smarts to stay safe while getting around the city. Here we can see a coyote sits in a parking lot outside Soldier Field in Chicago. And this one's got some uh, trash here that they're scavenging for. Imagine finding a 300 pound black bear digging through your trash can. Or suppose you saw one swiping bird seed from a backyard bird feeder. In many suburbs across North America, run-ins like, run like these are becoming more common. That's because bears often go where it's easy for them to find food. Suburb means an area of homes and businesses found just outside a city. Amazing city sightings. The first one is a sea lion pup wanders into a seaside restaurant in San Diego, California. In Jaipur, India, rhesus macaws, rhesus macaques, sometimes raid food markets. Three, a wild boar stumbles into a shopping mall in Hong Kong. Four, a mountain lion pro prowls through the Hollywood Hills in Los Angeles, California. Five, hyenas scamper through the village of Harar, Ethiopia. Six, red foxes dart through parking lots in Bristol, England.
city smarts. Some city animals learn surprising new skills that help them succeed at city living. In an experiment, 22 city raccoons and 22 country raccoons were given a puzzle. They had to break into a garbage can to get the food inside, but the garbage can was held closed with a cord. None of the country raccoons could open the can, but most of the city raccoons could. City raccoons are better at problem solving than country raccoons. Many kinds of birds have figured out clever ways to find food in the city, too. In Barbados, some bullfinches steal sugar packets off restaurant tables. They peck a hole in the packets to score a sweet treat. Outdoor restaurants like this one often attract birds that are looking for food. Here's the Barbados bullfinch. This type of bird only lives in Barbados. Too close for comfort? Sometimes wild animals and people can clash in cities. In Cape Town, South Africa, baboons have been known to break into homes to raid people's cupboards. They'll even swipe food from people <laughs> walking down the street. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine that? Some cities have major bur bird poop problems. Every year, millions of starlings fly through Rome, Italy as they migrate, and where there are birds, there's bird poop. A flock of starlings fills the sky over Rome. Here's a picture of a starling. Bird-covered streets can become so slippery that cars skid off the road. In New York City, pigeons release more than 25 million pounds of poop each year. The word migrate also means to move from one place to another at a certain time of the year. Run-ins with wild animals can sometimes be dangerous for people and for the animals. In Australia, people have moved into much of the koala's habitat. Now, koalas are likely to get hurt. As a result, special hospitals have been set up to treat injured koalas. The word habitat it means a place where an animal or plant naturally lives. Here we can see special ambulances bring injured koalas to the hospital. Signs warn drivers to use caution on roads that pass through areas where koalas live. More to learn. Scientists are studying how animals adapt to city living. In Brazil, for example, marmosets have moved into city parks. In the city, the marmosets meet a predator they don't see in their natural habitat, pet cats. Scientists want to know how city marmosets stay safe from them. Learning about how city animals can live helps people keep the animals safe. Marmosets are tiny monkeys that usually live in rainforest treetops. So tree the word predator refers to an animal that hunts and eats other animals. Living together. People are finding new ways to share space pe peacefully with wildlife. In Los Angeles, there are plans to build a wildlife bridge across a busy freeway. The bridge will help mountain lions and other animals move safely throughout their habitat. You can safely share space too. Follow these tips. Don't feed wild animals. Keep your distance. Be sure your pets are inside at night. Put bells on cats' collars to keep birds safe. Use animal-proof garbage cans. With care, humans and animals can live as good neighbors. This image shows what the Liberty Canyon Wildlife Crossing will look like once it's built. Quiz whiz. Okay, guys, this book has a quick quiz question section just like me. What does a scavenger eat? A. Only freshly killed meat. B. Plants, dead animals, or trash. C. Only plants. 
or D, only fish? The answer is B, a scavenger eats plants, dead animals, or trash. All right, quick quiz question number two. What have people in Australia done to help injured koalas? A, they planted eucalyptus trees. B, they trained koala sniffing dogs. C, they set up special hospitals. Or D, they built koala proof trash camps. The answer is C, they set up special hospitals. Which could be an example of an animal adapting to city living? A, an owl finds rodents beneath the snow. B, a squirrel hides acorns in small burrows. C, a tiger sharpens its claws on a tree. Or D, a hawk hunts pigeons instead of its usual prey. The answer is D. A hawk hunts pigeons instead of its usual prey. What item might help keep raccoons away from human food? A. Animal proof garbage cans. B. Sensors. C. Raccoon proof cars. Or D. Video cameras. The answer is A animal proof garbage cans. How much pigeon poop falls on New York City every year? A, 5,000 pounds. B, 1 million pounds. C, 15 million pounds. Or D, 25 million pounds. The answer is D, 25 million pounds. The wildlife bridge across Los Angeles will help animals safely cross A, a river, B, an amusement park, C, a lake, or D, a freeway. The answer is D, a freeway. Which pred predator do city marmosets meet that they don't see in their natural habitat? A, Coyotes, B, jaguars, C, pet cats, or D, pythons? The answer is C, pet cats. The six words that they introduced in this book were adapt, which means to change in order to survive in different conditions, migrate, to move from one place to another at a certain time of year, scavenger, an animal that survives by finding plants, dead animals, or trash to eat, habitat, the place where an animal or plant naturally lives, predator, an animal that hunts and eats other animals, and suburb, an area of homes and businesses found just outside a city. Here's a picture of the quick quiz questions. And here are our six new words. So what you can do now to follow up is you can either replay this story again to listen to it, or you can pause the video and you can go to your story writing journal. There, you can write down as much information as you remember from the video using your own words. Please make sure to write at the bottom of your research the name of the book you used. The name of the book is Animals in the City by Elizabeth Carney. Once you're done, you can always send me a picture or you can share a video of yourself reading the story. You can also go to your list of at-home work under the language section and you can check off this work. Paraphrasing is one of the items kind of close to the top of the list, so you can check it off once you've completed it. That's all I have for this video. There's a few more ideas for follow-up work below in the description that you can also do. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye!